Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I will tell you some new amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. Our first story is, Karen doesn't realize who we are. I participated in theater my entire four years of high school. The sophomore class would perform a dinner theater with a medieval theme every year, and parents and other family members were invited. They enjoyed a show and a free meal. I played a waitress or dancer. It wasn't like I had to take orders or anything. The most I had to do while waitressing was dish the food and refill people's waters. It was time to serve the meal in the middle of the performance, after I had finished my dance segment. I believe there was chicken, mashed potatoes, and a side of vegetables. I went to get the dishes after the families finished their meals and watched a few more skits. This Karen death-gripped my arm and bemoaned the blandness of her chicken while impatiently waiting for someone to inquire about her dinner. She allegedly wanted to send it back. I honestly believe that this was a mother attempting to be amusing with me, but... It wasn't. I had just turned 15, and I had no idea what to do. My teacher assured me that she would take care of it, but I'm not really sure what happened next. That Karen genuinely believed that she was in a restaurant with free food, where the 14 to 16-year-old children were actual seasoned servers. When she indicated she wanted to send the food back, I was pretty perplexed. To what? It was pre-packaged and already cooked when it arrived from the grocery store, and the teachers put it together on plates in the back room. She might have believed that someone from the cafeteria was preparing it or something, I guess. Additionally, because this was not a restaurant, we were not instructed to check on visitors and their meals during rehearsals. It's pretty amusing to imagine this scenario, since it's similar to when a kid makes you food and hands you a piece of plastic cake to pretend to eat it while making delicious noises, and you throw that cake on the ground and declare that you detest buttercream. This had the same feeling as that. I also never discovered whose mother that woman was. That's a strange situation. I've been to a similar show and I can tell you that food is not the main thing at such events. First of all, the show itself is important, and the money you spend goes to support it. If you do not support art, it will simply die out and cease to exist. And life without art is not life. Our second story is, you can't work for us. I'm a little older. Let's put it this way. I have grandkids in high school. I have therefore taken extra precautions to avoid leaving my house during COVID-19. Unfortunately, part of that has required me to stop going to the gym on a regular basis. So I made an investment in a few home furnishings. They were bought from a nearby fitness business that I chose in part because of their comprehensive warranty and servicing policy. Then one of the devices malfunctioned. When I called them, they were suddenly much more difficult to reach than they had been during the sales process. They wouldn't commit to a repair date, the technicians were never there, and despite it being a tiny neighborhood store, customer service would frequently keep me on hold for absurdly long periods of time. I ultimately made the decision to visit and resolve the issue there. I was shocked to see roughly a dozen automobiles parked in the lot, because at this point, our state was just starting to open up, and places like fitness equipment stores weren't seeing a rush in foot traffic yet. The majority of the vehicles are lifted pickups and jeeps with Punisher stickers and other adornments. That seemed reasonable to me, given the type of clientele whose first priority following a national shutdown would be a visit to the gym supply store. At the time, I didn't really give it any more thought than that. I was dressed in professional attire because I had just finished a long morning of Zoom meetings. Everything from dress pants to pearls to a knit turtleneck. When I walked in, I noticed a group of muscular, strong men standing in line next to a counter. 
since they appeared to have just left work, I assumed that they were also waiting to speak with customer service. I guessed it was because most elderly folks are staying put right now if they can avoid it, because they seemed shocked to see me. I waved courteously, but otherwise stayed out of it. After a short while, I noticed that the staff was addressing the concerns of the buff, meaty guys by name and escorting them into a back room. I assumed this was done to keep the groups of people apart. I approached a man calling me names who was dressed in a store uniform and said, Excuse me, do I need to take a ticket or get my name on a list or something? Again, I attributed it to his age, but he appeared astonished as well. He advised waiting for a moment. He insisted that I stay there despite my requests to begin filling out any paperwork. Since many of the other guys were doing so, I assumed that they were claims for repairs or other information I would need to supply to speed up the process. Every several minutes, a more senior guy would emerge from the shadows and shout out, Brett, Tony. But the more junior guy would draw him inside and point to me. I made a hand motion. Are you sure you're in the right spot, ma'am? The more senior guy approached and questioned me. Oh, definitely. I've been intending to come down here all week, I retorted. And he responded, Okay, then let's talk right now. You'd like to return. Are you prepared? I assumed that the muscular guy's bewildered stares were a result of mine skipping the line. I believed that they were giving me priority because I posed the greatest risk. Oh, that's nice of you, but most of these men were already here when I arrived, I replied. I'm happy to wait. Why don't you send me the necessary documentation to complete in the interim? However, he simply shook his head and said, Well, why don't we have a chat first before you fill out anything out? Then we left. I took a seat across from those two muscular men at a desk in a little back office. A routine repair appointment seemed to cause quite a stir, but I believe that this was just life in the new normal. I wondered whether this was both of their first days on the job, since they both seemed to be struggling with what to say to one another. Let's get on with this. The more experienced person then carefully questioned, So, do you have a lot of knowledge with the specifics, inner workings, and upkeep of gym equipment? I responded with a stern but honest reply. I've been working out every day for longer than at least one of you has been alive. Now, I assume they're attempting to find a cause to put me at fault and invalidate my warranty or somehow upsell me. I don't even see why this discussion is required, because I can look at any model on your floor and tell you what it does, why it does it, and which features are essential versus which features are just extra flash designed to line your pockets. I also recognize a working machine from a broken one. Please provide me with the details you require and I will sign whatever is required of me. Then let's get this resolved. Okay, listen. I'm sure you're quite experienced and do know your way around, but... Okay. How old are you? The more senior man said while folding his hands on the desk. What? He didn't need that information in any possible scenario to send a repairman to my house. I, at that point, was genuinely lost. Was he about to attack me? Was he implying that I would need a machine cure because I would pass away soon enough? What? What possible relevance could there be to that? You don't have permission to ask me that. Hey, yeah, I don't think you're legally entitled to ask that, the more junior person mutters. So that's when everything started to make sense to me. It's simply that when the clients come in, they're going to have a much easier time trusting someone who looks like them, said the senior guy. In rank only. He couldn't have been a day over 30. He gestured to his partner to shut up, although I'm not sure if he meant it as a double down. Thus, your gender, rather than your age, is more important. But no, the younger guy exclaims in agonized shock before turning to me and abruptly transforming from nighttime to professional mode. What my colleague wanted to express is we were targeting a certain demographic and he tells me. He ran out of catchphrases with only just that one. At that time, I sat motionless, glaring daggers into them. They understood the situation was slipping away from them quickly. I said, you realize it's unlawful to question an applicant their age or discriminate on the basis of gender. 
when I finally realized that I'd accidentally entered a pool of job applicants and had been mistaken for one. The senior man yelled, It's really not about us, ma'am. We're trying to keep you safe, you know? He obviously believed he had the matter under control. We don't want to simply imply that you are unable to work here, just that you shouldn't assume that by ignoring you, we're doing you a favor. There's a lot of heavy lifting that older folks should avoid doing. Have you not observed that as you age, your bone density declines rapidly? Additionally, you might work alone in the store with other employees and be the only woman there, which would be quite awkward for you, I mean. I wanted to make sure I had everything covered, since, although I'm fortunate to have a steady job, many of my older, smaller colleagues are having a difficult time right now, and it enrages me to think that they will ever have to deal with this type of nonsense. Well, thanks for your care, I responded. However, given the challenging economy and my qualifications for the post, I'd still like to submit an application. The senior guy responded firmly. For all the reasons I just outlined, I don't believe that's a good idea. The junior guy was ready to give me one just to stop this. I had had enough. I requested to meet with the owner. Because there was no way this baby sweat stain could own and run a company. They said that it was impossible to call the owner. I chose the business card that said owner from the tray of cards that was on the desk. The sole contact information was a phone number for the main company line, but there was also an email address, so I decided to send him an email instead. I need your entire names right now. The younger man identified himself as Ken Lopez. Fine. The older man identified himself as Brian Smith. Hey Brian, why does your shirt say Andy on it? I asked, nodding. I located his actual card and just took a copy for my files. As I went to go, I asked one last time. Just to be clear, you're saying you won't even let me apply for the position because you won't consider me based on my age and my gender. I didn't want to give the guy any opportunities to duck behind those flimsy excuses. He initially made an effort to maintain silence, but soon gave in to the strain and said, Look, it is what it is, ma'am. While his ignorant junior counterpart only wished him luck in his job search and attempted to give me a coupon for my trouble in making the long drive. However, I didn't feel sorry for the younger employee either because he hadn't given me an application when I was still waiting to be hired for customer service. He took one look at me and asked his boss to get rid of me instead. I then left shortly after that and we corresponded via email. I described what had transpired, noting not only had their employees engaged in discriminatory hiring practices, but that when I arrived at as a customer, no one had welcomed me or asked how they might help, allowing this incident to occur without either party even recognizing that I was a client. I still haven't received a job application, but that's okay, because my current employer probably wouldn't be too happy to learn that I'm looking at other opportunities. What I did receive was a quick, easy repair for my equipment, and a contact number for the future. Later, the owner called to personally apologize and let me know that the senior employee had been fired and the younger employee had been reprimanded. The real kicker, the company's founder, was a female. I believe that all people have the right to work wherever they want, as long as they are able to fill the tasks set by their employer. It is unacceptable to discriminate against the person just because of their gender or age. What was especially ridiculous about this story was that they gave the OP fake names. But the t-shirt had his real name on it, right in front of her. Like, come on, if you're going to be so rude and lie, at least check the uniform you're wearing. What's also funny is that these people didn't even check whether this person was a client or a candidate for a position beforehand. This is the reason why a huge number of workplace incidents occur in the first place. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.